Hi there. I'm Chris from Air Windows. I am back as always on Sunday to give you stuff. But in this case, it's kind of a error correction or something that I'm fixing, but also something new that I didn't have out before, which isn't audio. Let's talk about the audio thing first. Um, I have boop, a plugin that you might have heard of before. It's this little thing called tape, but see what's added to it? Now it has a thing called bump. Now the whole deal with tape, tape was invented to be the featureless, no controls, put this on your bus and mix into it, uh, newbie friendly, no fiddling, just kind of as if you had a tape machine and you were just going to mix stuff into that and it would take care of everything for you. So it's got a slam control, which is a gain trim because that can be useful. And previously it had nothing else, but it also has a tape head bump. And the way it was set up, people were finding that objectionable which is a bit of a problem for your one size fits all, no controls, works with everything. You can, you can see how that didn't actually go very well. So what this is, is the redo of tape kind of the way that it should have been in the first place is the general idea there. It is tape with one additional control and that control is bump. If you turn that up to one, you have what you had before, which was the amount of bass boost and head bump coming out of the uh, fake tape machine that people found objectionable. If you have zero, it's leaving the head bump out completely. And if you put it to 0 0.5, that's what it defaults to now. So my hope is that about half as much as I started off with is a good go-to for people that that's gonna work for people in general going forward. And let's hear it just briefly on this track because this is my noisy heavy metal video. Now if we had the original setting, it would be this. Now, I think that actually sounds pretty good, but people found it to be too big of a change in their mixes. They put it on and go, what happened with all of this extra bass? And I'm going, well, it's because tape head bumps start giving you extra bass and it has a particular characteristic and a particular sort of looseness to the lows and I've spent years modeling all that kind of stuff. And people went, oh, the bass is too loud. So here is the answer. I may not know everything about Logic, but I do know that you can click in this area, type stuff in, and it lets you go back to what is the default setting, which is 0.5. And what we hear now is cutting in tape at the new default setting. And this was the mix in the exact situation where I was reproducing an analog chain, but for the starter kit, but the analog chain didn't include a tape machine. If it did include a tape machine, it might actually sound a little bit more like the a higher setting, but this would be what I'd have it set to as a default if it was just built into the starter kit setup. So you might find like if you're doing this, then if you're trying to do a starter sound, then uh, and it does not feel right to you not going to fake tape, this might be the one for you. If you're just figuring it out, leave it at its defaults, mix into that, and it might do something useful for you. For instance, here we go. 
this area has a, uh, a small sine base pulse built, built into it, so you should hear a change in that. And we'll turn it on and then kick in the uh, tape plugin. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically what I'm bringing you. Again, this came out, but this is the Redux version. What Redux means for me when I have something that is a big enough change that it needs to have been the original one that came out first, is I'm updating the thing in place. And if you go back to the original post or the follow-up post, then you'll see that you're linking to the new version, which is how I felt and how other people felt it should have been in the first place. But I'm also going to edit it to uh, rename the first one in case people needed to lay their hands on the one without the additional control. Again, if you wanted to reproduce the original behavior, you'd set bump to one. And it defaults to 0 0.5, which is a, uh, a head bump that you will notice a difference, but it won't be um, such a striking difference that it's freaking people out with the amount of bass that's coming through. And there you have it. Oh, I can also briefly show you what no bump is like. If I do that, I can cut it in and out or put it back on the heavy rock stuff. This is the no bump now. So what's going on when you don't have a head bump is there's a lot of sophisticated low frequency stuff that's not being done. But the stuff that is being done is a whole different kind of um, distortion algorithm that's somewhat frequency dependent. And it is uh, sort of reining in highs in a particular way that doesn't completely obliterate them. Like there's a limit to how much energy you can push into the highs with this, but um, you know, so it's not like a filter, but it's also not like any of my other uh, distortion algorithms. And if you leave bump off completely, you have only that, which is similar to an earlier plugin called From Tape, but it's the most recent version. So yeah, there you have it. And that is my introduction to Tape Redux, which again, the original one is going to be renamed and you can still get it, but you can't run both of them at once because it is in the same like ID value for plugins. And it's a literal drop in and replacement. You drop in and it replaces the previous file. It's the same name as the previous file. It's the same ID as the previous file. And the only thing that changed is now it has an additional control to it, which in many uh, DAWs and systems will actually go to its default value when you start it up. If it doesn't, if it can't find a entry for the missing control, it will typically go to the default value. But yeah, if anything horribly breaks, there is the original version. Go to the original posting and find that. And I mentioned that there was something else. Um, basically, I have to bring up to speed with the fact that I do all kinds of stuff other than just plugins. And uh, I won't go on at great length about that. But I've been fooling around with lookup tables. Like I can briefly if I fool with this just right, I'm doing this little recording. And 
I can go to other ones that are like, hey, it is a Air Windows teal and orange lookup table where the background went dark and the uh, foreground went uh, more orange and it's your modern uh, colorful stuff or a hyped colors one which doesn't do all that much but it makes some of the colors pop and the most recent one that I did is the one that you were seeing throughout the entire uh, video and you can see that it looks kind of less color hyped and plain but maybe more natural maybe more film like but what it really is is this I took a um, lookup table and designed it so here if we do this thing it actually isn't going to focus on it uh, now it kind of is this is a little color card that I did with watercolors. They're really cool watercolors from a guy named Stuart Semple in uh, the UK. And he sold this kit and I made a little uh, color chart with some of the most high intensity uh, color pigments that I could get. It's, it beats anything I had previously because I didn't have great watercolors previously. And I also did some sky tones and some tree tones, eye colors, hair, fur colors, skin, flesh colors, stuff, stuff like that. Mixing those together because I was going to experiment with doing art and trying digital mixing using real paint for swatches. And when I did that, I found that the original colors for this, look at what the uh, cadmium red is doing off of the raw camera some of these colors are way too bright they're too harsh so i did a lookup table as a color correction uh, going into affinity studio to basically make all of these as close as i could to the appearance of the actual pigments on paper next to the screen i was using And that's part of what I'm doing. Like the other part of what I'm doing besides this. And the reason I'm showing you this at the end of the tape video is because I'm going to put a link up to a uh, color corrected image of this for anybody who does do visual arts or whatever and would like to fool with the Air Windows pigments because I did a digital version of these Stuart Semple pigments that I got, including some of my color blends. And if you do arting on things, I'm currently favoring the uh, program Clip Studio Paint for some of that stuff because that's a very special program. But I did the color correction in Affinity Photo and there's a free open source thing, uh, Krita, that you can use. And there's also, of course, Blender, which has uh, coloring and painting stuff in that as well. And there's just a lot of stuff you can do. So if you don't only do uh, music or if you need to add some of these things to your music like I'm going to start trying to do better visual representations for my music jams and make like little fake album covers by just sketching them very quickly once I'm finished and putting them up as the uh, image files um, there is another layer of stuff that I do that you might like so there you have it so you'll be able to download a uh, graphic of this and I'll put it in my link and I'll put it in my stuff because there's nothing much I can do with that. I don't have a visual arts following. I'm just working in the plugins, as you know, but I do all this other stuff and it's nice to bring it in there at times when I can. So that said, I think I have said more than enough about that. So what I will do is uh, bid you goodbye. I hope you enjoy tape or the tape redux rather because it's still called tape but it is the reissue that has the bump control in it that it kind of needed all along. Maybe that's going to make it more useful for a lot of you because that was always meant to be one of my big heavy hitter plugins. The, the one that would just be amazing and would work for everybody 
And since it didn't, it's time for the Redux. I hope you like it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.